If you're thinking about selling your house and capitalizing on all the equity that you were able to build lately, you should be thinking about capital gains. Today's topic is capital gain tax when selling your house in New York, specifically on Staten Island. The reason I'm bringing this up today is because lately I've been meeting with homeowners who've lived in their homes for many years. They built a lot of equity. And during the recent several years of the pandemic, the equity had risen even larger and quicker. So today we're going to be talking about what is capital gain tax? What are the exemptions that we can utilize? And we will also go over cases where you will have to pay capital gain tax regardless. But before we begin, let me just tell you, I am not a CPA. I am not an accountant. I am a real estate broker in New York and New Jersey, but I do want to give you some education for you to have an understanding because people don't understand exactly what it is. They don't know what the numbers are and they don't know that this is something they have to take to consideration before they are making those decisions about buying and selling their house right now. I recommend when you decide that you want to sell your house and you know that you have a lot of equity in it and the prices have gone up substantially, the first thing you should do is get together with your CPA, go over all these numbers and see where you're at the moment. But my goal here in this video is to give you some understanding and education on how these things work. So let's dive right into it. First of all, let's just clear up what capital gains is. That's just the difference of your profit between what you spent on the purchase and what you sold it for. So the difference between your spending and your final sale price will be your capital gains profit. Many people have the idea that capital gains is relating to only investment properties, but it really isn't so. Although if you ask me, I think that a homeowner living in their house, paying the mortgage, taking the liabilities, doing the right thing, living the American dream should not be taxed on a profit because they bought a home and it should only be taxed to people that are using real estate as a business. But nobody asks me, so I don't make the rules. So now what does it mean? First of all, in order for you to be considered that your home is a primary residence, the rules are that you must be living in the house for two years out of five years. Now that doesn't mean that you have to live in the house for two years consecutively. For example, you can live, let's say right now we're in 2022, so let's go back to 2017. So let's say you bought your home in 2017, you moved in, you lived there for a year, and then you moved out and maybe you rented it out, but then in 2020, you moved back in there and you lived there for another year. So that's a total of two years within a five year period to be considered as this is your primary home. You will need to prove to the IRS though that you did reside there primarily in the last five years. Let's talk about the exemptions, right? So. The exemptions would be you can deduct your expenses. For example, if you did home improvements, maybe you did a big job like adding square footage, maybe you finished the basement, maybe you added a screen room, maybe you added a bedroom, maybe you added another story. Some people do that and maybe you renovated the kitchen, maybe you placed a new roof, you renovated the house completely. So those expenses that you have encountered doing that, you can deduct from the total gains of the profit that you made on this property. If you hire the realtor to sell your house, the realtor's broker's fee is an exemption which is going to be deducted from your capital gains. Your closing fees 
would be deducted from your capital gains. Let's look at an example of what these numbers. If you look at my board here, so this is an average example of what's happening on Staten Island based on uh, all the homeowners that I've met in the recent few weeks that are thinking about doing this, selling their house and exchanging it, moving to either downsizing or buying a bigger home. So most of them have bought many years ago and they purchased the property for about 300,000. And the average sale price these days in today's market is 900,000. So their capital gain, their profit is 600,000. Now the exemptions would look like this. So you have the, if you hire a realtor, you're going to be paying realtor's fee. Let's say this 6% commission, then it would be 54,000 uh, closing fees. And then let's say through the years you have invested, I don't know, let's say $39,000. And then whatever the closing fees are that I'm not going to calculate right now. If you want to know about how to calculate closing fees, I did a video about that. You can watch that. So here we are. Let's say all of this calculated in a total of 100,000. So now from 600,000, you will remove all the exemptions, all the deductions, and you will end up with 500,000. So here's the most important and biggest exemptions that you would get from the state is 500,000. But there's a catch. The 500,000 capital gain that you have made from buying the house at 300 and selling it at 900 after all the deductions that you are allowed to deduct, you are exempt of capital gain taxes at 500,000. However, in order to be able to be exempt of 500,000, you need to be married filing jointly. Here's where it gets ugly. A lot of my homeowners are at the age where they are widowed. And what happens in this case is that because the rule is that it's 500 for a married couple and only 250 for a single person. So now they are facing a $250,000 capital gain tax. And depending on your income bracket, that could be anywhere from 15 to 20, maybe even more percent. So now you're talking about, you will have an approximately $50,000 in capital gain taxes that you would need to pay if you would be single. So what does that mean? That means that when you are doing your numbers, first of all, most people, when they sell a house and they buy another one, what do they do? We take all our money that we have capitalized from the sale of our house and what do we do with it? We put it as a down payment and use it also for closing costs to put in our new purchase because most people would prefer when you have such a huge gain from living in your house and building equity for so long, you are your goal most of the time would be to purchase a home without having a mortgage. But then you invest all your money into this new purchase and you totally miss the capital gain tax that you would be liable to pay when it comes down to filing your taxes the year following your transaction. So that's why it's very important to sit down and discuss. A, you should be talking to a realtor who is knowledgeable and can go over those numbers with you, but you should still, I highly recommend, 
set up an appointment and speak to a CPA and take a look at all of your possible deductions like we went over here especially when it comes to home improvement and closing fees and make sure that you are fully aware of what is coming after you do what you do because once that's done you cannot take it back all right so if you have any questions please ask if this information was helpful to you at all please like this channel subscribe because i talk of all different stuff real estate related on my channel and you don't want to miss that i appreciate you watching this video give it a like and i will see you on the next one